If addiction is what landed you in jail, what better place to beat it than behind bars? That's the logic behind a new program in Niagara County where federal money is helping inmates there get clean. News 4's Jen Schantz takes us inside a special unit of the Niagara County Jail where this pilot program is taking off. It's all quiet now here inside pod one at the Niagara County Jail. But in a couple of minutes, when the shift changes, this common area will be filled with more than 50 inmates. And they have something pretty unique in common. Every individual who is in this pod has agreed to voluntarily join the substance abuse treatment program while they're incarcerated. The men in here have similar stories for how they got locked up. Felony possession of marijuana. Got in a little bit of trouble for uh, attempted robbery. Sale of a controlled substance. Whether they were high while committing a crime or stealing to get drugs, most of the men say they're in here because of their addiction to opiates. Sheriff James Vautour says this is different than anything they've ever done before. It's killing our kids, uh, the drug addictions. It costs the county around $105 a day to house an inmate here. Vautour says he's sick of seeing the same people cycle through these walls. That's why the county applied for a federal grant to launch this program, which is also available to female inmates. I'm certainly not a soft sheriff, but I don't want to house these guys again. It costs me a lot of money to house these guys. If I can get them some type of treatment while they're here, while they're a literally and figuratively a captive audience, then that saves the taxpayers a lot of money as well. And it turns out not that many other counties tapped into the money. So Niagara County got more than they had hoped for to fund this two-year pilot program. $280,000 to best self-behavioral health. The federal money dispersed by New York State pays for in-house group and one-on-one -on -one counseling sessions five days a week. We wake up, group starts at about nine. We run group between an hour and an hour and a half. Um, after that, maybe play some cards, we have lunch, and then uh, they usually try to get a one-on-one -on -one with every person that's in the program, but there's only three people working the program for 40 guys, so it's hard, but um, they, they do the best they can, I know that. And these inmates support each other, too. We're like a little band of brothers. Each day clean is another small victory, another promise of not returning here. We all get along fairly well because we all have the common addiction things, so we can relate to each other in that way. But these men say the biggest impact of the program lies in its peer specialists. A peer specialist is someone who really has been down that road, has been addicted themselves, has entered recovery and gained some stability in their recovery. They live the same type of lifestyle, so it's a lot easier to get and to take advice from someone who's been in the same place you have and can show you what they did and how they got to where they're at. Once defendants leave jail, they're connected to long-term help on the outside, too, through either Best Self or North Point. The grant also funds access to Vivitrol, a drug that can help block cravings for opiates. Eligible inmates like Ian Power get that injection upon leaving jail. So the goal of most people coming into this program is to learn skills to become sober when they leave here. Deputy Chief Daniel Enger says this program has forced his staff to look at addiction and recovery differently. But there are still rules, chief among them staying clean. If you try or successfully get drugs into the jail, you're out. We look at it as an opportunity to uh, give them a chance. Um, but, you know, if they violate that um, three times, they're, they're out of the program. But it's actually been uh, tremendously successful so far. The state's Division of Criminal Justice Services found that addiction services can save jails more than $2,000 per inmate every year by cutting down the services they wouldn't need if they were sober. Niagara County is following Rikers Island, Albany, and Monroe counties by launching this sort of program. The numbers aren't in for Niagara County yet, but this measured drop in recidivism elsewhere is encouraging. Reporting in Niagara County, Jen Schantz, News 4.